Cool, cool, cool. Let's get it cracking. Welcome, welcome, welcome to episode eight of season three of In the Salmon. Um, mm -hmm. It's Ali Hasith, and alongside we've got Nuan as always. Mm -hmm. Nuan, quite an exciting week uh, for you and I. Um, yes. <laughs> let's, let, let's get stuck into it. I want to talk to you. What, what We did something quite special, you and I. First time uh, you and I have done this on Saturday. Yeah. Talk, talk me yep. through it. What happened on Saturday? Oh, mate. I think uh, it was the start of a, of a potentially budding career in uh, in something we've always wanted to do. And I guess it's the main aim of having this career podcast, which is uh, a bit of live stream career commentary. Um, how, good, how good was last Saturday? Well, I mean, I played for the Endeavour Hills Career Club, so it wasn't the the ideal outcome we wanted in the grand final. But uh, but yeah, we got to, we got to do a bit of frog box live stream commentary, and I must say that was a very very it was a bit stuffy in that in that football shed. But um, right. wasn't but too you bad. know you know start from the bottom uh, as they say. Um, <laughs> but no nah, man, that was that was really good fun. I really liked doing that. I, I I don't know. I got a real kick out of that. You know, just being able to talk cricket, and I know I made a few errors. I. I I, uh, I went a little bit Ranjit Fernando with my with my commentary on occasions, and you oh. you were you were very eager to point that out. <laughs> it wasn't even me; it was some of the other boys. Actually, I was I was staying quiet for most of it, but uh, yeah. <laughs> <you know. laughs> but um, but no, it was good fun. It was good fun. I think I think it's something that maybe a, a few clubs can incorporate in the future. Um, you know, I mean, it's it's good. It's it's a good way to sort of put yourself out there and and experience that, right? I think. You know, there's a there's an art to cricket commentary, and I feel like you and I just really blended well together. Um, I mean, if, even more impressive is you because you have, you don't know you, you don't know anyone of either team, and yet you um you spoke quite eloquently, and it was good banter, good jokes, and uh, and, I, and I made definitely the, the lesser amount of errors between the players between. You I was gonna say, you know well, what? So. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. I mean, look, <laughs> yeah, it's one of those things, but yeah, mate, that was uh look. I think we need to give a shout out uh to both the. And Devil Hills Career Club, my career club, um, and uh, of course the Oakley Career Club, who played in the Victorian Sub District Career Association Third Eleven Grand Final, and uh, it was live stream on Frogbox. So it's on YouTube, and uh, yeah, really want to thank them for giving us uh, the opportunity to commentate the match and and uh, provide our thoughts on it. So yeah, good fun all around. Um, a bit disappointing that Endeavour Hills lost the match in the end, but yeah, the experience. Why don't you shout out the, uh, our other two? Uh... Uh, commentating yeah look I, well. I, I, don't, I don't know if they listen to our uh, podcast okay. but but uh, yeah special shout outs to obviously uh nethma dandenia and uh virginda tagar uh, affectionately known as tags um thank you to those boys for helping us out in the com box as well it was good to have like a team of commentators um you know talking about that final because it was a two-day match and if you and i were there for six hours we'd be absolutely like cooked at the end just like <laughs> You know, there's, there's only so many times I can correct you, no one, before I'm just gonna let you go and just say the wrong thing all the time. <laughs> you know what? Oh man, I'm, I'm in I'm in that Ranjit Fernando phase of my commentary yeah. now. It's just he thinks it's a run out, but it's an LBW. It's too early in your career to be making such mistakes, bro. What's going I on? Know, I know I need to <laughs> I need to get a bit of Richie Benner back in there. But no, look, it was good. It was good. I really liked it. I, I hope we get to do more of that. Um because you know it, it 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 makes you watch cricket in a different way doesn't it because suddenly when you're commentating or if you're even like scoring on a weekend if you're the scorer you suddenly notice little nuances of the game that are a bit different as opposed to just like cheering your mates you know that's right yeah um i mean you picked up on a lot of different interesting things you made some good observations um good analysis um I think the special shout out goes to you because you're like the you're like a third party. You you, you don't know who's playing. You don't know the players personally. You don't know their strengths or weaknesses. So um, yeah. you know you played that very uh, Harsha Bogle, Mark Nicholas kind of role where you know. Say Harsha you Bogle, just, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, Harsha, are you listening? <laughs> <laughs> so no, good stuff. Man. I really liked it, and it, you know we have a we have a good vibe, good chemistry. So um, keen for more of that. No, it was good. Yeah, really enjoyed mm. it as well. And I think, mm. um, yeah, you're right. When you're commentating, it's uh, it's definitely very, very different to if you're playing in the game. Um, mm. You know, I think for me, um, you know, like captaining this season as well, it was it was kind yeah. of like you know, you're looking out for certain things or certain opportunities on how to get the batsman out, as opposed to just yeah. like just watching and seeing what unfolds. You're thinking yeah. about what bowlers can do, what batsmen yeah. can do. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I really, really enjoyed it. And and yeah, special shout out to the other two boys that were with us as well, who yeah. made it a lot easier for oh, us yeah. because you're yeah, right, yeah. six hours would have been absolutely 
Six uh, hours stuck in a box with you, Noah. Let me just say, yeah, uh, we might not be doing this episode today. You know, <laughs> <laughs> that's too much time spent. Exactly together. right. <laughs> Racking up too many hours with you, Noah. Uh, <laughs> can't, can't deal with this, man. Um, <laughs> no, I think I think one of the I think that's what makes cricket such a fascinating game because depending on what perspective you observe the game, your I guess what you notice in the game differs, right? Like if you're if you're cheering for one team, then obviously you're focused on your team. That's and right. you, you kind of hone in on your player and you're, you're, you're supporting the boys and you don't really care about the opposition. Then obviously when you're scoring a game, you, you're, you're observing other aspects of, of, of the game as it unfolds. Um, you obviously want your team to win, but you, you kind of switch off and you try to observe the umpire. And then again, if you're broadcasting or writing or commentating about a game, that's again another different way of observing it. So, um, right. you know, that's what makes sport such a, such a fascinating um you know, uh, it's just such, such a fascinating outlet to, to to see the way humans operate in in different environments. So that's um, right. Yeah. It's it's, yeah, it's like a multi multi sided dice. You know, you can look it at is. it a multitude of ways, and then yeah. you get something out of it every single yeah. time. So yeah. it was really good, especially because like you and I have very contrasting styles of like uh our, like our outlook on cricket and how we yeah. approach cricket as well. Yeah, but I think that's why we, we uh, you know don't want to toot our own horns, but I think it went quite well um, on the Saturday with you and I. Oh yeah, it was um, so much fun. I, I do, I do it again happily with, with yeah. a few more people, but but certainly it was good fun. Yeah, for sure. Um, speaking of shout outs, I do want to make mention actually. You might, you guys might notice I've got a new top behind me here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> actually, got a. Uh, we'll, show, we'll show, we'll show, we'll show everyone. Um, yes. So, look yeah, at that. I don't know if you can see that. Oh, there you go. That's actually out. our logo on an indoor cricket top. Um, so we, we're actually sponsoring a an indoor cricket side of ours. Uh, one of the boys from indoor, um, from outdoor, sorry, started an indoor team. Um, Aaron Hardy, shout out to you. That's his side. Um, he's so gracious uh, to have our logo on the shirt. So hopefully the Hacktrill boys uh, do really well. So they'll be playing at Springvale uh, uh, Indoor Centre, I believe, this season. Yeah. Um, so yeah, shout out to the Hacktrill boys and good luck. Um, yeah. That's awesome. But, uh, yeah, let's 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 jump into the uh, the meat and potatoes of this uh, this episode, new one. Yes, yes, absolutely. Um, a lot has happened in the last week. Mm. Um, we say that every week, but I feel like this week was a little bit more painful for you and I uh, oh. than others. All right. Oh, I don't want to talk about it, but we have to talk about it. <laughs> exactly. Of course, I'm talking about the recently concluded test series between Sri Lanka and New Zealand in New mm. Zealand, where. Mm. Sri Lanka were unfortunately for us uh, whitewashed um, yeah. in an emphatic and disappointing fashion. Yeah. Um, emphatic for New Zealand, disappointing if you're a Sri Lankan fan. Yeah. But, um, you know, I'll just quickly run through the, the actual results. So, in the first test match, it was actually a, a really good game. I, I think we spoke about mm. it last week. New mm -hmm. Zealand winning by two wickets. Um, the second test match, however, we were all rolled up for a close game. Unfortunately, yeah. didn't pan out quite how we thought New Zealand won by an innings and mm. in 58 runs yeah absolute carnage I'm not going to go into the scorecard myself yeah. one I trust you've got the scorecard in front of you yeah 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 talk me yeah. through it what happened um look I I honestly feel like Lanka went from like being really competitive to being typical typical Lanka that you know that doesn't know how to play in non-Sri Lankan conditions um I feel like all the mental energy that was spent in that nail biter in the first test just sort of went out the door for the second test. And yep. um, quite frankly, it was quite embarrassing. And, and it was just a very unwelcome um, reminder of why Sri Lanka continues to only get two test series against the really competitive teams when they play when they play poor cricket like this. And I think what makes me really sad is that Lanka showed that they were competitive enough in in on in green conditions, in 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 colder conditions. They showed that they're competitive. You know, the first test, Angelus got 100. Um, you know, there was really, really good standout performances. You know, Mendis made 80, 87. A quick uh, eight. Very quick yeah. game as well. You know, we saw um, Asita Fernando, that the medium fastballer, take four wickets. Like, Lanka showed, shines, uh, showed signs that they can compete. Um, this test match was like complete brain fade. Like, there was, I, I watched the highlights, you know. Um, I'm a faithful Lankan supporter, even though I'm very disappointed. Um, the bowling was wayward, you know, they were just bowling wide, it was spraying it. Um, you know, uh, I think Lahiru Kumara, who bowled really well in the first test, he was going at six and a half runs and over. Yeah. Um, when Ridiculous. New Zealand piled, yeah, when piled on the 580 uh, for four declared, you know, just, just real like 
half volley, useless, just uh, Sri Lanka were playing without any direction, without any kind of plan, as they say. And yeah. look, you can't always plan for things, but even the basics were going were going astray, you know. Um, I think uh, what really, really annoyed me was um, a couple of the bowling changes that that um, Dimuth was making. Um, mm -hmm. There were times where I thought, you know, he should have brought on, um, you know, someone like a Dananje De Silva just to, eat, like, just to, you know, break things up a bit. But it, it's it's a really it's just it's just annoying when this happens because it kind of undoes it, it, it undoes the really hard work that was done in the first test. Um, yeah, it does a little bit. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. You know? So, it, so mm. it's like the the biggest tease, man. You know what I mean? Mm. The biggest tease. Mm. You know, if we can liken it to uh, to New on a Friday night, you take a beautiful girl out to dinner. You know what I mean? <laughs> you made you made reservations, dinner reservations. You know, <laughs> you catch a cab back to her place, and then you know, New pulls out the line. Oh, I could really do with a coffee. <laughs> and she goes, she goes, mate. I drink tea. We're not having coffee tonight. Oh. And sends you on your way. Such a tease, that's, right? That's and you it. hate that's it. You right. hate that. It's just one of those. It's like you pick that Netflix movie, you think you're gonna pick something good, and then it's it's, <laughs> it's like I don't know. It's like Dubai Bling or something. I don't know. It's just, <laughs> you know? Yeah, I think I think for me the standout was um as you said they they were going at quite a fair um mm. quite a fair tick the the mm -hmm. Kiwis apart mm. from Tom Latham who had a striker of seven, uh, 28. Yeah, the lowest striker was 72, uh, which is very good for an ODI, you yeah. know. And that was oh, Devin Bono yeah. with 78. Then you've got Kane Williamson operating at a striker of 72.63, yeah, accumulating well, 215, and then yeah. and then Henry Nichols at even a higher rate, 83.33. Yeah, 200 not out of 240 balls. Yeah, is this red ball cricket? What's going on? It's uh, I makes think, a question. It's I think it's, <laughs> I think it's like this. I've got a, I've got a I've got a really good Kiwi mate of mine who I met last year. His name is Elliot. Elliot, if you're listening um look I, I know i said <laughs> i know I, I said lanka might win this 2-0 but look I'll, I'll i'll let you um i'll let you take the brownie points my friend elliot said this to me right and he was like nuan if you're letting henry nichols score a double hundred in a test match there's something seriously wrong with your bowling yeah that's what he's that, that i mean along the lines of those words maybe elliot will correct me if he uh if he listens to this podcast but um but he was like you know i mean Henry Nichols is a is a good bat is a is a decent batter, but he's you know he's not if you're letting someone like him score a double ton, then there's absolutely there's something not right with with the way you've been bowling. Um, and uh, look, I think I think Lanka needs to Lanka needs to uh, step away from this. Think about what went wrong. They 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 can compete. They can compete. This test was just an example of just a complete brain fade. I felt like they just let everything go. You know. Um, yeah. You know, when they even when they batted, you know, only Dimuth Karnaratna and you know yeah. Chandimal in patches showed any sign of resistance, right? And and New Zealand weren't even bowling that quick, uh, Hasid. I think they were operating at around the 135, maybe just a tick under yeah, 140. Yeah. I think our fast bowlers are quicker than theirs. I think yeah. I've, I, I saw on the I think speed. You've got uh, Matt Henry really, who's, who's yeah. genuine quick, and then you've got um, yeah Tickner, who's who's okay, but he's not like yeah. Express Express. Yeah. So you know um i had a look at the dismissals as well a lot of the sri lankan batting dismissals like when we got out were literally all due to rash shots a lot yeah. of them were just due to big big hits and just like holding out like chandima especially angela matthews um kusal mendes oh my god don't get me started on kusal mendes he literally just like he's like here have a catch you know and yeah, it's just no. And it's just, uh, it just really, it really annoys me, angers me, irritates me. <laughs> All yeah. the adjectives. So, you know, this is not, this is not like, it's not like Sri Lanka can't compete. They can compete. The second test was literally just, you know, bra a complete brain fade. Um, and then they showed. Can, can you, can you brain fade? For, can you brain fade? Sorry, for multiple days though, like brain fade suggests that it's like a, you know, it's like a lapse. You know what I mean? Can you lapse consistently for like multiple days at a time? I don't know. I think it's like this, yeah. It's not. Uh, they 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 did brain fed in the sense that their shot selection, the shots that Lanka were playing were absolutely disgusting, right? And yeah. given the situation they were in, just absolutely not appropriate, right? Um, we're talking about the first innings alone, right? Because the first innings, innings good, right? The, yeah, the second innings they finally kind of switched on a bit, but yeah, but it was only a matter of time before you know New Zealand was going to win. But that first yeah, innings. Yeah. It was it was a combination of of, of brain fade and then also uh, just panic stations, you know. Um, yep. 
I think it was at the, it was around the four for thirty four mark when this Angela's Angela Matthews was dismissed. That's when real panic set in because you know you're four for thirty four, you're like five hundred and fifty runs behind. It's kind of like mm. what do you do in this situation, you know? And the other thing is in that match there was a lot of high winds. I don't know if you were uh, watching the highlights, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Um, the, the it was really windy uh, at that ground, and um, there were even instances where like you'd bowl like a decent like line and it would still be wide because the wind was taking up that much you know what i mean yeah, so yeah there are obviously external weather circumstances that that did have an impact but but even then like you still have a degree of control as a batsman you know just just play just play boring cricket like defend everything you know <laughs> nobody really cares if you score at this point in the game you know no, if, if the team scores 580 yeah. <laughs> against you yeah. You know the chances of you actually getting up on top at the yeah. you know, at the end of the fifth day or whenever it, when it uh, when the game finishes are very very yeah. slim. So you've got to yeah. bat as much time as you as you can. I think um, exactly. Yeah. And another thing I want, I want to mention before we wrap this one up is um, a special mention that has to go to Kasun Rajita. So he played a real he played a real save the game kind of innings. He he batted for a hundred and ten balls. He lasted a hundred and ten balls. He's a genuine number eight. Like he's a genuine tail ender, but he somehow survived a hundred and ten <laughs> balls. What is a, is a genuine Thailander? I mean, I've seen him. He can bat a little bit, but like what I'm saying is he he received a lot of praise. He only scored 20 runs, but he lasted 110 balls. I did and, his job. Yeah, and and there's probably the reason why Sri Lanka even made it to day four, and and you know got the score they did. You know, Dananjay De Silva played a stupid shot um, on 98, attempted a little paddle sweep, and he towed it straight to the man at at, at you know silly uh, silly point uh, silly mid on uh, sorry at uh, short leg. Um, so these kind of errors, Hasid, they're not due to the pitch. It's not due to the weather. It's not due to the ball. It's just due to Sri Lanka's very inept decision making and uh, just just poor cricket. And and as a fan, it's disappointing when these things mm -hmm. happen. You know, it's like I, I hate to say it, but Lanka deserved to lose that. If you're going to play terrible no, cricket like sure. that, you know, uh, you know, you don't you don't deserve to win matches like that. Um, no, definitely not. And and you wouldn't you wouldn't be able to win against Associate Nations batting and playing like that at all. Like that's that's, yeah. the, that's the reality of it. And the only thing is, that, you know, it's only it's only going to it's only going to get my mates to continue calling Lanka an Associate Nation now when they when we play Associate Nation style cricket. So yeah, so, <laughs> there you go. Yeah, I, I guess so. My, my kind of like um the way that I view Lankan cricket and I have been for the last couple of years is we're like we we're, we're very good at T twenties in patches. Yeah, but uh, we've certainly lost our way um, in the longer, lo the longer sort of formats of the game, which is unfortunate. But one thing that might, uh, that might, uh, I guess, sort of revitalize us, revitalize Much us lies. potentially. Yes, is uh, Dimuth Karuna Ratna's actually advised that he's going to step down as t uh, Test captain after the yeah. series upcoming with Ireland. Yeah. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Are you happy with him going, or? I think. Um... Look, Dimuth is an interesting guy. He's a good guy. Um, He's a good guy. <laughs> as in, I mean, I've, good, I've had, good morals. I've, I've, I've had the pleasure of obviously speaking with him. He's a lovely man. Um, look, he's he's an interesting captain because he he doesn't have that sort of aggressive sort of tactical energy like Mahela Jawadana or or even Ranatunga of yesteryear. You know, even um, Matthews. Matthews even. Yeah, he's not a very adventurous kind of captain. You know, like. Yeah. He's not the kind of bloke that's willing to take on a risk and see what happens. And again, a good example of that is the first test match where um, he got Prabhat Jayasuriya to uh, bowl completely outside the leg stump to save the match and the umpire penalized him saying yeah. that you can't do that, right? So he's that kind of a guy. And uh, look, he, he has done a job for Sri Lanka, I think, in the post Sangakara Mahila era. Um, yeah. era. So he's, he's, his record isn't the worst either. You know, I mean, we spoke about it before. His batting average went up some, like so yeah. much after his captaincy, yeah. and his actually win loss ratio isn't the worst. It's okay. No, no. But, yeah. Uh, the way I describe Dimut Karnaratne is I call him Mr. Consistent. You know, he's <laughs> he's consistently inside the ICC top ten ranked batsman, right? Mm. Um, Which is not know, easy to do. No, not at all. I, I just find it amazing that he's always. I mean, he's, he's always hovering around seven, eight, nine. You know, he's inside the top ten, which is which is amazing. Um, given how you know how much Sri Lanka has fallen at Test level with 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 patches of brilliant performances, mind you, I'm not you know I'm not saying they've fallen off a cliff, but like you know we've been we've been we were a very good team once upon a time. We've been dangling for a while though. Dangling, it's like dangling the carrot. Yeah. Lanka no, carrot. It's like dangling up the end of the cliff. No, that's what it's like. Yeah, literally. <laughs>
Um, so look, it, it's a bit sad to see the Dimuth Kanrat in the go. We've we've kind of become used to him being the captain. Um, yeah. yeah, it's certainly. I think it's certainly time for a younger captain to step in. I want someone who is a bit more adventurous, a bit more kind of g's up the boys a bit. You know, um, we have someone not, like that. Well, I'm trying to think. Of, I'm trying to think. I'm like, who could it be? It can't be Chand. We can't have Chandimal. Um, I'd like Matthews yeah. to come back, but he he probably is not going to come back. Yeah, look, he's at, he's 35 years of age now, so you know, yeah. if you're gonna if he's gonna be a captain, he's gonna be a very short term captain. That's yeah, be short term captain. I, I don't think we've groomed someone that that you you know that kind of fits in the bracket mm. that you've described. And and that's uh, and, and this is like a, probably a, a different topic we can explore later. But that's what I've always been annoyed about with Lankan Kree. We never groom players to come up in the post Sangakara Mahila era, era. It was meant to be Matthews and Chandimal, and then these two yeah. kind of just like fell away. But uh, when it comes to captaincy, yeah. Um, yeah, look, it'll be sad to see Dimuth go. But I feel like you know he he's made a decision that was best for him. He's a bit like a, ugh, it's a bit of a weird comparison. Wait, did you just say he made a decision that's best for him? Is well, I mean. Well, I mean, he, you know, he's how he's how old? 34, 30, 33, I think. Yeah, he's not like he's not young. He's not old. He's he's he look he he, he in, similar to what Tim painted for Australia. Dimu took over the Sri Lankan team at a very pivotal time, at a very awkward time. So we have to commend him for that. You know, he didn't mm. obviously uh, turn Sri Lanka. It's not like Sri Lankan cricket went sour. Obviously, Sri no, Lankan no, no. cricket. Sri Lankan cricket sort of dipped a little bit. Obviously, we lost these star players, but he 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 kept the team somewhat competitive. You know, there, you know, he will have certain he will have certain achievements to his name. You know, defeating Australia in a Test match that's huge. Um, you know, amongst other achievements, and he's always been one of our best batsmen, one of our best consistent, reliable batsmen. Um, mm -hmm. You know, in that two Test series against India, he was he was the standout Sri Lankan batsman. Um, and that's you know th these are things that we should recognize and remember Dimuth for. Um, yeah, it'll be you know it'll be a bit sad to see him go. I've been quite used to watching him bat and and seeing him bat even for my own club uh, at Endeavour Hills. So uh, good luck to him, I guess. Yeah, no, that's fair. Hmm. Um, no, I, I think he's been a, a very good servant for the country. Um, yeah, and I guess he's sort of like a like a good embodiment of like the typical Sri Lankan cricketer, right? Yes. Post Ranatunga is like the yeah. typical, like sort of like calm, collected. Yep. Um, I guess he's sort of like our version of someone like Kane Williamson, right? Yes. Um, correct. It's just that unfortunately we haven't been able to rally up the troops, or we maybe might not, maybe we don't have the same troops that Kane Williamson yeah. does. Because hmm. I was going to talk about Kane Williamson just quickly. He's probably like, you, would you agree? He's probably the best test captain in the world right now, just off his current performances, or. Dude, what do you I, think? I absolutely love Kane, Kane Williamson. Um, yeah, probably, probably, arguably the grittiest, the most, uh, you know, the most toughest sort of captain I've come across. I, 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 I really admire this guy. Um, the way he just never gives up in any situation. Like it could be going absolutely pear shaped for New Zealand, and this guy will just quietly be like, "No, nah, no, nah, I got this. I'll find a way." And I, I, I really do respect that about him. Um, you know, it kind of reminds of Angela Matthews in the earlier part of his career. But, you yeah, know, a lot of respect to Kane Wilson. He's probably, he's going to end up being New Zealand's greatest ever batsman, period. In my opinion, like the best ever. Like, in which move? In, hmm? Red Bull. in Red Bull. Red Bull, White Bull. I mean, he's just White like, Bull? I mean, I have to look at his record a bit deeper. But, <laughs> but definitely in the Red Bull game, he'll he'll easily be New Zealand's greatest ever. Yeah, you know, we yeah. talk I about. Think, I think he's yeah. probably, I think he might even be that already. Yeah, you could, you could argue that already. You know what I mean. Recently, I mean, overtook Ross Taylor, right? He has he has eight yeah. He has eight thousand Test match runs, right? Oh, okay. You're the numbers I man. Think, I, think, I, think, I think I think I think he's I think he's surpassed eight thousand runs. He's only 31, 32, 30, around that age. So he's still got a solid maybe four or oh, five four years, years if he if yeah. he he can easily he can easily join the ten thousand club I reckon, and he'll become and if he does, he'll become the first New Zealand cricketer as a New Zealand male cricketer. Sorry, mm. uh, to to reach ten thousand test match runs, so that that's huge. So that's I think it's, so I think you can definitely achieve that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So look, that that series was uh, was unfortunate for us, but I hmm. think um, Sri Lanka have a series coming up shortly, so we should yeah. work for that one. Um, yeah. We do want to. I do want to talk about uh, the recent white ball cricket games as well. No one's my favorite. Yes. some of the podcast. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. India and Australia. We yep. saw two cracking games yeah. uh, unfold recently. Oh yeah. Um some results that we couldn't really uh, I guess sort of picture 
on the mm. face of it, right? Mm. The first one, um, Australia batting in a pretty abysmal fashion, only scraping together 188, not even batting the full 40. Mm. Um, overs, uh, India getting there, uh, kind of, mm. I don't know, they were, they were kind of struggling, but they, they got there fairly, fairly easily in the end with the help yeah. of uh, Kale Rahul, who found some form. It's yeah. been a while and been under a bit of, I guess, sort of scrutiny from the public fans. Yeah, uh, but he but he came good in the end, seventy five off ninety one. Yeah, but the game that really stood out for me is um, the second game. That was wild. Yeah. That was that was such a weird game. It was beautiful. It was just <laughs> poetry in motion, and I will tell you, it was because of one man and one man alone, as far as I'm concerned, Mitchell Stark. Right, yes. Mitchell Stark has yes. actually strung together two absolute gem games. Yeah, and. Uh, very reminiscent of 2015 Mitch Stark in the World Cup, yep. if, I, if I can say oh, so. Oh man, yes. What's happening here? What like how has he done this? Uh, I look, Mitchell Stark. He, I think he's found some. He's revisited, he, like you accurately said. He, when the way I was watching Mitchell Stark bowl in both of those ODIs, it was it was like a throwback to the 2015 2016 Mitchell Stark. I think I don't know. He must have had some time off. He's he looks very well rested. He looks like he's had a good mm. rest. He seems much more energetic, lively. He looks like he's just gone like five years younger. You know, he's smiling. Um, he's he's good... <laughs> he look five years younger. Are you talking about appearance? Appearance is the vibe. It's like it's, it's like oh, that's the vibe. Like you know, yeah, he's, he's got good. got the pace up. You know, he's trapping Virat Kohli for LBW. The in swinging Yorker is back. Um, that's the one that actually really surprised know? me. Um, that uh, in swinging Yorker is deadly, and if he can actually control like that, it, like he has done. Oh man, that was a. Uh, that was, it was uh, it was it's always nice to see Stark at his best and uh you know I yeah. wish the late I wish the late great Shane Warne was here to to witness this as well he would have been quite proud um to see you know Stark at his best but Stark when he's on top has it he's a very dangerous bowler he's probably so difficult to face I would not want to be a batsman facing up to Stark with that dangerous in swing yorker and then and then when he bowls that out swinger it's like a subtle difference but that's right that extra pace and you, you know you don't know whether to come forward come back it was magnificent and uh, he was rewarded with that with that fifa and you know when, when indians come across this kind of bowling even the best look like look like absolute gooses like he made a mockery of uh you know of the likes of um surya kumar yadav which we need to talk about um even shubman gill uh you know uh, Rohit Sharma, the captain, um, when that ball swings late, oh my god, they look like absolute gooses. And uh, he was well supported by Sean Abbott and the other new guy, uh, Nathan Ellis. He bowled really uh, well. The as new well. Guy. <laughs> Nathan Ellis. He's not the other new guy. He's Nathan Ellis' new one. He puts some respect on his name. He's played for Australia before in T20s. The but, new uh, guy. The new yeah, guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. What do you mean? He's only played four ODIs. But he's but, like, played a few T20s. He's not the new guy. He's been around. Okay, okay. All fine, right. Fine, fine, fine. fine. <laughs> Look in the in the one world. Um, in as the new one world, <laughs> you're not a real cricket unless you've played fifty ODIs, right? Yeah, exactly. Right. In the right. new so, one world. Yeah, that's it. I don't, uh, know, I don't know you then, but that's fine. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, no. Look, good to see Australia. Good to see Australia play some good cricket and like dominating cricket because in the entire Test series they were getting absolutely. You know, they won one, but like everyone knows that was just like a, a useless game. But you know the whole the, this this entire India series has been all about India dominating, India showing why they're the best, and it's nice to see Australia get one back. Um, so good on them. Yeah, yeah, and and obviously special shout out to uh, to Mitchy Marsh and Travis said Mitch Marsh, he was batting like an absolute terminator out there. He smashed oh, yeah. the biggest sixes we've ever seen. Yeah. Um. So it was good. It was good to get it done and dusted within the first ten overs and really yeah. put some authority on uh, and, and some pressure on. Uh, you know, Rohit Sharma and his lads for the for the next game, which is uh, as this as we're recording mm. today, it'll be tomorrow. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, you did make mention of Suri Kumar Yadav. Um, mm. I did want to actually touch on him because he's a yes. touchy topic as far as I'm concerned. Very touchy. Um, because we obviously saw him uh, reach, I guess, sort of um, like like proper social media fame after his yeah. stint in the recent T20 World Cup. Yeah. I mean, he batted like an absolute. I don't even know, like, like if Verinda Saywag and A.B. De Villiers had a baby, that was like Suri Kumar Yadav, right? <laughs> the love child. Insane. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. But then, as we've seen in the last, I've got these last test, mm. uh, last 10, sorry, ODI innings, right? Mm. Mm -hmm. we've, got, we've got two golden uh, two golden ducks in the last two games. We've got a mm. four, uh, we've got a nine, uh, sorry, we've got a 14, 31, four, six, 34, not out, mm. four, eight, and a nine. So only three times he scored over 10. 
mm. in the last 10 innings is two golden ducks both mm. to mitchell stark the same ball in swinging yorker caught in front lbw yeah plum as hell hell are we yeah. seeing the actual like uh are we, are we seeing Suri Kumar Yadav? Are we seeing the fall of Suri Kumar like Yadav? What, what's happening? This is a very interesting. I want to make a comparison here. I want to make a comparison here, and um, I want to bring up a Sri Lankan cricketer um, who had who went through a similar phase like this, and that is actually Ramesh Kalutharana. Um, so when obviously Ramesh Kalutharana burst on the scene for Sri Lanka, he was a bit like Sky. He was this like guy that just came in, started smashing the ball around for fun, you know. Um, people are like, whoa, this this guy in Jai Surya, what a what a duo, what a combo. And and you know, Ramesh Kalutharana just absolutely obliterated any attack. But yeah. did you also notice just as quickly as Ramesh Kalutharana came, he left just as quickly as well. And do you know why that is? Is because of Glenn McGrath. So McGrath and a few other fast bowlers are one of the few bowlers that knew how to dismiss Kalutharana early, very quickly by exploiting his weakness right mm -hmm. now when you've been found out like this like sky has with with uh with mitchell stark and the string of low scores you have two things there's two options number one you can hit, a, hit you can hit your way out and try and get back into form and, and go back to being that you know master blaster kind of batsman or number two you really take the time to work on your defense or you work on that weakness and then slowly come back into it in that nine, in that in that phase, Kalutharana took the other option, which was I'm just going to keep hitting out. I'm going to smash McGrath. I'm going to make sure that he doesn't trap me on the pads. But McGrath kept trapping on the on the pads, and very soon Kalutharana was phased out, and then in came Sangakara. Right. Mm. So a similar thing might happen to Sky here now. Sky is he's a he's a good bat. He's a great. He's a he's really entertaining to watch. We've seen the best. We've seen the absolute best of Sky. But right now, as we, we all know, with all these like, you know, master blaster batsmen that come in, there's a point where they get found out, a weakness is exposed, and then every bowler starts to capitalize on it, right? That's what Stark is doing, uh, a bunch of these bowlers. So, mm -hmm. so you know, I, I listened to Dravid um, talk about Sky, and he had a lot of glowing praise, but, you know, um, maybe Sky needs to adjust his, you know, his mentality, or he needs to look at a different way of scoring runs. Um, because there's, there's obviously an apparent weakness with how he's batting. And, you know, we're, I'm not some expert an analyst like wanting to say exactly what's going on, but there's mm -hmm. something mental, there's something within his mindset that, that is causing him to get out like this. And, uh, you know, he needs to hurry or else his spot could be up for grabs when the World Cup comes around. So potentially, um, I think he, I think he's always already branded himself as like some kind of cult hero within India. So oh, yeah. I think he, I think he's already done that. Um, yeah. It's interesting that you say that he should change his technique or something like that. And it, it, it is interesting that you've compared him to, to Kali Tharan as well. Um, uh, in, in, I'm talking about that phase of the career. That, that, yeah. That, yeah, that chapter, that's all. I think like I think it's different because uh, there weren't T20s in, in when uh, Ramesh was playing. So of course, Suri of course. has had like the license to sort of brand himself in this fashion. And obviously, yeah. like he's come into the ODI side because of how he's performed. And mm. be, and this is the I guess this is like a good topic of conversation as well because like it is. People, people said this, a similar thing about Rishabh Pant recent, or not recently, oh, yeah. like probably a year ago, because yeah, he batted yeah. very much similar to Saru Kumar Yadav, and he did that in the Test arena. Mm. And then um, we're like, oh man, this isn't really Test cricket, this and that. Mm. Mm -hmm. Or he'll go, he'll bash like a really quick 90, 98 or 99, yeah. and then just go out. And people are just like, oh, why did he play that shot when he's on 99? But then like mm. I'm over here, and I'm scratching my head like, man, how did he accumulate the first 99 runs to begin with? Correct. Playing that same way, right? Correct. Yeah. You know, yeah we yeah. saw actually a couple of days ago, Sophie Devine scored thirty. I uh, scored ninety nine of thirty six balls, I believe. Mm -hmm. And then she could have easily hit a single. This is in the WPL, by the way. Yeah. For RCB, she could have easily hit a quick single and then hit, hit the ton. But some players just aren't like that. They're not all mm. about the accolades and this and that. They they got to a position playing a particular way with a particular mentality, mm. and they're true to that, and they want to keep playing that way. So I think there's yeah. definitely. Uh, you know, credit due for players mm -hmm. that have the, I guess, sort of the balls to play like that, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but it is it is interesting because, you know, 10 innings is, is a lot and two golden ducks is not pretty. Last thing you want to see is uh, something like uh, Ajita Gaka getting seven ducks in a row or something like that uh, back yeah, in the nah. early 2000s. Um, no, no, no. I think, I think you and I should, uh, you and I should observe this phase of Sky's career and see how he comes back from it. I think it'd be very interesting just it, it, it's something for us to learn from you know we can learn something from this um and see what he does because 
you know, I guess Sky put a lot of expect. Like he he raised the bar so high, right? He raised yeah. the bar high, like literally. Like, you know, untouchable. It, it like, was just him by himself at the time, right? Yeah. You know, I remember on the on Instagram, Twitter, you know, all these people like, whoa, this is like superhuman batting. It's a superhuman guy, you know, like Glenn Maxwell, um, you know, Trent Bolt. All these characters are like, oh my god, this guy, where where did he come from? You know, and uh, India was like, you know, proudly showing he's like our superstar. He's the hero, kind of kind of thing. Um, and so now, obviously, the sky has fallen, as you've, uh, <laughs> as you've <laughs> very cleverly, uh, you know, uh -huh. mentioned there. Pun completely intended. Um, <laughs> so but, yeah, um, so yeah, but yeah. as you were saying. No, I mean, like, I mean, you're right. We, we knew this was going to happen as well, man. Because, mm. like, we, we were talking about this right throughout the T20 World Cup. Mm. Mm -hmm. Every every knock, we're like, man, this guy's a this guy's a beast. Mm. But mm. Uh, you know, what goes up must come down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's no yeah, way yeah. you can maintain this, yeah. right? Yeah. So I think this is probably this is going to be Surikumayab's first real form slump, real mental challenge, right? How yeah. is he going to get through this, right? Yeah, yeah. But you know, getting out for a, a couple of like low knocks is is fair enough. But two golden ducks to the same ball, yeah. the same bowler is huge. So I'm it super is. excited to see what he does in the next game. Yeah. Um, I don't yeah. know if he should kind of like bat in any particular way, but mm. I think the main thing is you got to bat time. You mm. got to bat time. You know, he's created this sort of like. Um, this baby, this baby yeah. that you can't control. Yeah. And it, it, it's his ego. It's his yeah. ego. It's the crowd. Yeah. It's the expectation. He's created yeah. this monster yeah. Yeah. that yeah. he just does not have control over at this point in time. So yeah. he has to work really hard. Yeah. Um, but also at the same time, he has to realize how he got into the position that he that he got into. Yeah. By trusting his gut, seeing the ball, mm. hitting the ball. Um, yeah. So yeah, I, I don't know. I think it's I think it's a very dangerous thing. Yeah. To have players like this in this kind of light because there's yeah. so many children out there and so many players that are, are striving to be something like mm. like sky yeah um and they it's 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 like a one in like it's like a one in a million type of thing yeah to be Absolutely. able to bat like that and to be, yeah. to be able to make it to international status of course it's probably in india it's probably like a one in a billion type of thing to be honest let's be real oh, right 100 100 so 100 yeah well, we knew it was going to happen but um we don't want it to we yeah we don't yeah. want him to like leave and we certainly want to see him in the world cup yeah later in the year yeah see what what i would what i'd probably suggest to sky um uh, not that he's ever going to listen to this so i hope ex he does ex expert analysis expert analysis expert. Well, I, I don't have like ideas for his technique but what he can do is take a leaf out of the great players who have gone through these big form slumps obviously one being the great sachin tendulkar right in 2003 sachin tendulkar was going through a huge form slump he couldn't get a run and mm. people are like, oh, he needs to go. Tendulkar's done. He, you know, he was great when he was going, but he has to go. And so Tendulkar looked within himself and he's like, why am I not scoring? I feel good, but the runs are not coming. Why is that? And it turned out in that in that year, the cover drive was one of his very weak shots. Mm. He was always getting out to playing the cover drive, right? So what did Tendulkar do in that 2004 test series? He scored a double century without hitting a single cover drive, one of his most famous innings. No, um no i think i remember hearing i think, remember, I think yeah they've all spoken about this i think right exactly yeah, so yeah, yeah. you know that and that was a very technical deficiency now for sky i don't know what the deficiency is but whatever it is he needs to i guess put it away for a little bit yeah and play and just focus on surviving that's just the thing, stay yeah. just focus on surviving and then at some point he'll get that ball that reminds me of the sky days and he'll he'll whack that and then he <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think for him it's not it's not like it's right. not like a it's not like a skill thing it's like it's like a mental thing you it's know mental I mean? yeah. yeah i think yeah i, I mm. genuinely think that he's caught, sort of like created this um this massive expectation within himself yeah um and he's just trying to i guess sort of like um not let his fans down and not let his reputation down but yeah. he needs to think about his the longevity of his career um yeah. we we're talking about this before offline he's played at the mumbai indians in the ipl franchise for a long 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 time yeah um he's very very deserved of this position mm -hmm. um and he needs to sort of like guess sort of elongate his career as long as possible he's not a young chap anymore um no. even though he's got a lot of flair like a you know yeah like a, like a little raging testosterone filled yeah you know, 20 year old uh man but um yeah it would be such a shame for him to i guess sort of fizzle away i don't think he will at all um i hope he doesn't see him bounce back i mean i hope he doesn't that, that's that's all yeah. i can say um, but he, you know, he has, but he has to do it quickly, Hasid. 
That's yes, right. Yeah. Yes, it'll quickly. Because this is India, right? There's when you always, play for India, man, there's about a billion people waiting. <laughs> there's there's <laughs> always yeah, fun. there's there's, there's going to be some young gun that will take his place. So he 100%. has probably like a, he only has a few games to get it right and score at least a quick fifty or and show the selectors why he's still the right man to be in the World Cup squad, and then go from there. You know, yeah, it's um, also dangerous. Like how Rahul's actually come into some runs as well. Yes, um, I didn't because, know, I did notice that. I did notice yeah, that. Yeah, they're all yeah. competing with each other, I guess. Hmm. But there you go. That's it. So that pretty much wraps up the episode, I think. Nuan, did you have any yes. kind of like last uh, thoughts uh, before before we, uh, I guess, sort of cut the cord? I just want Lanka to get their act together. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. And win some matches. <laughs> yeah, I think we've got a couple of white ball games coming up. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So no doubt, Lanka should be able to bounce back. We'll have a different side entirely. Yeah. Um, but Lanka always have a knack of playing. Uh, well, not always. Most of the time, we've got a knack of uh, coming good come yep. white ball uh, absolutely absolutely but yeah if that is everything we'll wrap this one up thanks all yep. for tuning in for season Thank three you. episode eight this is Norn and i signing off have a good week thanks guys thanks once again we'll talk to you soon take care bye-bye